Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another episode of the wonderful Propaganda Cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, right here on June twenty second. And what's so special about this date? Well, this is the date of Operation Barbarossa's beginning. Yes, indeed, the invasion of Russia. So yeah, fun little fact there. Fighting shall be in the northern half. Domium D Tommy 952. Fighting for the Americans. Hurrah! Fighting for the 3rd Armored Division. Opposing him shall be. Korean soldier. Fighting for the 17th SS. Panzer Grenadier Division Götz von Berlin, the only SS division which pretty much exclusively fought on the Western Front. Never saw action against the Russians. And was actually largely composed of Hungarians or. Romanian Volksdeutsche, which was essentially ethnic Germans. We are seeing a two pioneer start. On the other hand, we're seeing a pretty curious start from Donny and D. Tommy. Three engineers, one sort of starts it, and then another engineer squad pops out and finishes it. So that's certainly a bit interesting. In the meanwhile, we are seeing the first unit out for Korean soldier, the ever present Volksgrenadier. At least in Company of Heroes, of course. Fought on the western and eastern fronts. In fact, although you don't usually hear so much about them on the eastern front, usually it's all of their stories on the western front. Now we are seeing engineers sort of slowly advancing. Of course, using the three engineer stats, of course, seizes much territory right off the bat, not on bat. And there we go. First rifleman swore arrives fresh from the barracks with a knife. Nice. Nah. Blah. Seems to be like I can't really keep my. Words from melting together. Very, very sorry. With a nice mug of coffee, I was about to say. So much going on in my head, I fear. Just need to sort of focus. Volksgrenadier advancing. No, they're not advancing. They're pulling back. Not quite ready to hold this point. In the meanwhile, Tommy is advancing. And we're also seeing here a bit of barbed wire from Korean soldier to ensure sure this high munitions point does not get immediately harassed. Or if they try to, it's certainly not going to be easy because again they'll need to cut the wire or take a very long route. Small engagement right here on the right flank. False Gunners and Rifen fighting off. And there we go. Korean soldier in fact laying down heavy cover with his false gunners, thus ensuring the Rifen don't have it so easy. Pioneers taking night nearby as well. And there we go. Heavy cover protecting a bit. Although as soon as of course the troops get up. But there we go. Engineers and force back, leaving behind only false gunners and pioneers to fight against the riflemen. This could go either way. Oh dear, looks like though the false gunners are losing. Sadly, they took too much damage, and the pioneers were not able to sort of aid the situation. Slightly unfortunate right there, but very, very close. Additional fighting going on here, though the false gunners in this case easily winning the fight against the engineers and their tiny little grease guns. Pushing them away. Looks like though Tommy is ready to push towards the worst and perhaps punish the Fox Gunners for being crouched. And there we go, caught out in the middle of the open road. Negative cover again, very bad. Easier to hit, take more damage in this case. Though we are seeing Korean soldier hitting a swift retreat, realizing he cannot win this one. Sec third unit out for Korean soldier is of course the ever seen MG42. Oh, looks like he just managed to pull back behind Bokat before he receives a salvo to the face. Jolly good show there. Fox guys getting reinforced once more and quickly rushing out. Mines going down right here. The interest, interesting enough, perhaps worrying a bit about a rush. Rifling coming under fire. This time they are on their own against Pioneers and Fox guys, and this could definitely go into the advantage of the 17th. There we go. I mean, really notice again with the Pioneers aiding, and I mean, they do as much damage as regular MP40s, but they are a lot less accurate. Still up close, they can do alright. In particular with other support units, and there we go, right from the heavily wounded and sent packing. Further advance up through this little road, right from pulling back towards perhaps the house to gain. No, they are not trying to take up a defensive Front position there. In the meanwhile, Fulcher is in fact are fortifying the road with sandbags just in case Tommy did decide to garrison that structure. Not bad at all. I mean, really good usage of such matters like. But sandbags and barbed wire again, something players can, you know, that my players indeed, while having a bit of trouble, you know, can sort of try and working with, you know, barbed wire sandbags. I mean, it is rather the small advantage the false gunners can gain if they know what they're doing. 
So be mindful of that. MG42 covering the western flank. No additional support for the right flank. Just Volskis are now caught out of their cover. Pulling back towards this heavy sandbags, but more riflemen are pushing in. Korean soldier pushing back towards the small position, but it's not really looking good. And meanwhile, MG42 moving about here. Engineers taking points. And flame for Oh, sniper up! Sniper up for Korean soldier. Snipes. Some poor engineer for his face before hanging out with this flamethrower. Falska is getting toast, pushed back, and there we go, a nice strong maneuver right through the road. And the Wehrmacht cannot hold, unless we see a largely a full retreat right there. Sniper though managed to get off a good shot before com he doesn't even pull back. Cheeky fellow, he might have been hoping to put lure them into the mine. And oh! Engineer squad went down to the Pioneer MG combo right here on the east. Although the engineers are still going for the fuel, will the Wehrmacht be able to stop that? Who knows? Rifle pushing up. BAR's on the way already, so Tommy's definitely going for the very, very aggressive start with his infantry. More mines going down here, quite interesting. He might be expecting, of course, to get hit by armored cars or something similar, or perhaps a deep to try and hunt down the sniper. So again, in those cases, mines can work quite nicely. Rifle and push back. Another MG42 joining in for Korean soldier and the 17th. Volksman is pushing up the road. Although they are heavily wounded. Some with losses. No medic bankers for him or medic stations for Tommy. But of course, he's going to be getting the BARs. The Browning automatic rifle. A World War I era weapon. Slightly LMG, also something called a battle rifle, which was sort of more of an automatic rifle, not quite an assault rifle either. Troops are advancing. Oh, Falskis getting dropped again. The BARs quite making things nasty for the Wehrmacht. And a quick look at the tactical map, rather, of course, reveals the west is rather more open. Of course, the main effort right here in the east. And the question is, of course, how will Tommy take it? this little thing on. Sneaking up here once more going for cutting the wire. MG42 not quite watching that spot. These Falskners definitely need to get back and they need to get reinforced. They are not in a good condition to be fighting the enemy. And these engineers are getting sniped. More mines. In fact, there's quite a few mines for Korean soldiers so far. Not one has been set off. No mind. Another engineer squad went down. That was a bit unfortunate right there. He's quickly setting up another mine, though the rifle there might stop it. Moving in once more. Sniper retreating, and I think we might be seeing another sniper or something else from Korean soldier. Looks like the east is completely collapsing again. The false guns were sent in without being fully reinforced, ensuring they couldn't do much. So he was immediately pushed off right there from the eastern flank, leaving behind only the western flank with an MG and some pioneers. The MX oh, mine goes off right there, although none were killed. That's quite fortunate, but there's no real Trier sender at the moment. He's going to need that swiftly, though, if he wants to take advantage of that. And there we go. We're losing a Two Wehrmacht snipers. That's definitely going to turn up the heat on the Americans. And definitely also go really for the high attrition factor by draining manpower. In a rather nasty man, there we go. Rifleman dropping like flies. Very large, heavily armed flies, mind you, but still like flies. Time to kill some crap. Pioneers up here in the north could be running into a bit of problem as the rifleman sneak through the brushes, and there we go. Opening up on the Pioneers, BAR and Rifle Fire tearing through them. Bit of butt wire. Bit more. And Krieg Bounce going up for Korean Soldier. So he might be seeing some grenadiers from him. He's probably not expecting. And the vehicles right away due to the, of course, BARs, and that is quite a bit expensive. Plus, of course, the snipers are probably also having with the manpower drain. So he's probably going to just solidify his position with some grenadiers with some tough German infantry. Rifling up here, getting stopped by the MG42 once more, and Fulskens have secured a BAR, increasing their own firepower by just a wee bit. 
The BAR was also in fact used by the Polish, and I believe the British in fact had it under consideration before going for the Bren gun themselves. So there we go, engineers rushing into that. A lot of engagement going on here. False is indefinitely in this case, losing it, trying to lay down more barbed wire. We also note a rather large barbed wire movement right, or oh, barricade right there. Again, he's rather trying to limit how much Tommy can actually move about. Now it's making him easier for himself to defend. MG though is getting outmaneuvered right there. Oh, Rifleman quickly getting sniped. No sniper as of yet for Tommy, but we are seeing a trias under up. That's good. We are seeing him moving in, trying to catch the snipers. There we go. He is going to rush into the mines. There we go. One swap pins. No debt though, but there we go. For the final and up, I believe Korean soldier has gone defensive. And the rifle though end up getting pushed back, not just due to Volkswagen with BRs, <coughs> not, but also the MG42 makes it a bit of a nasty predicament. So another push by W and D. Tommy got punished, he got a bit too eager. And that is what happened so far. I mean, we've seen absolutely no mines by Tommy. I mean, that's quite something. I mean, even a few mines could really make things difficult. I mean, of course, now he's gone for minesweepers. In fact, in fact, he's gone for several minesweepers. So, of course, the mines might have done this ably, I suppose. But still, I mean, some could even have done a bit. You know, also Bart Wine against Sandbags, a lot of things like that. Oh, no mind. He has actually laid down a mine right there. And, of course, in this case, he wasn't able to do much with it. So of course that much for my big mouth. We are seeing a weapon support center up. Wehrmacht is advancing. Half track out. Not that the 17th in Normandy actually have had any. Perhaps they might have had a few but they really didn't have a lot. Lastly they had to rely on trucks and if they didn't have that some scout cars. And again failing that bikes. Yes indeed Panzer Grenadiers on bikes. Wiring off the left bit right there, and there we go, another push right there, but into an MG42, and sniper fire. Not doing too well, and I don't think Tommy's actually got any grenades that could definitely be of help. Oh dear, he actually lost a unit. Pioneers were cut down, so it's time to lay down more mines, but oh, Rifleman hit a mine again. My goodness, he doesn't lose any men to mines, he just ends up with wounded troops, but not a single one killed, I think, so far, at least they've been... Very, very few. Oh, but there we go. Mine really takes out a huge chunk of this squad this time around. There's no luck for him. Half track covers the retreat. And we are seeing Tommy has gone for airborne. He's gone for recon runs, of course, to sort of get a synergy. Oh, sniping the base. How cheeky that. And he got the false lens with the BAR. He might even, he even got an MG squad. Oh, that. Bastard. But he didn't get the snipers and a wager that was actually what he was intending to get. Still he got two forces troops out of Korean soldier and the 17th. That's definitely going to be hurting a bit. Here we are now seeing Grenadiers move in and there we go right from getting sniped. Snipers keep opening up getting more and more American riflemen. Now of course the Grenadiers are going to keep up pressure a bit more. Kampfkraft sends are up, quite nice, might be an idea to also get some emergency for the half track, thus decreasing the damage it takes by 25%. I mean, that's not exactly small biscuits. Rifleman coming under fire, snipers and grenadiers moving in. Oh, these false guns are getting caught behind enemy lines. And getting rushed by flamethrowers. There we go, fully retreating, running the gauntlet of BARs and Garands. Half track for some reason advancing pretty boldly. That much support, and these snipers also getting a bit too tricker happy. Sticky bomb on the half track. Immobilized. This could end not very well. MG though managed to suppress some of the riflemen. Snipers continue up as well. Pioneers pulling back. And he is moving up. And apparently no sticky bombs. Does he not have the munitions for it? Snipers open up. Grenadiers moving in. He actually tries to sort of 
repair the half track and my goodness he actually makes it the half track is not blasted into bits quite the miracle Grenadiers pushed back yeah. sorry for chatting right there more Grenadiers on the way so Korean soldier is going to make up for it by just training a lot of Grenadiers that's 900 manpower that's quite a bit he's willing to invest in that that could certainly be to the advantage of Tommy if he knows how to push that and of course he needs though to actually be aware of it in the first place but so far no medic bankers or medic station from either side and I definitely think Tommy could actually benefit from a medic station or two and again attrition does matter in this game and again medic station and medic bankers does rather limit the amount of attrition you actually take Oh, there we go. Several grenadiers going up versus right. Oh, sh we can't run. Oh dear, American sniper gets uncovered. Not quite his day. And there we go. A rather heavy push by the Wehrmacht. Although again, if Tommy does have a strafing run, this is pretty much the time to use it. I mean, he have no better target than this I think but there we go half tech suppressing no suppressive volleys from Tommy on the other hand Granadier is getting gunned down sniper fire and grenades en masse run into this lot of American troops and they're taking absolutely heavy casualties one Granadier squad down but the rest rather seem to be doing quite alright snipers moving up German snipers not quite there in fact he has lost one of his snipers though That's definitely something. Rifle right on the far flank. Half track needs to be a bit careful, a bit cautious. And veteran G2 up for Korean soldiers infantry. Always nice to see. Tommy getting ready for another push. And another recon run, trying to spot where the sniper might be. Finding him, of course. But his snipers are nowhere near to actually gain any advantage from it. MG42 right here, continues to do its job quite nicely. On enjoying the French countryside. So a bit of retreat for Korean soldier, but he's still doing alright for now. Let's just beat this up a wee bit. Bit of a slow advance. Damn headset keeps falling off. Assault phase has been reached for the Wehrmacht. For the Panzer Grenadiers. Another recon run. He's absolutely enamored with them. And with the notion of actually finding that damn crap sniper and putting a bullet between the eyes. Fultzgren is now getting equipped with MP4. Just giving a bit more automatic fire to the Germans Grenadiers getting gunned down, getting run off right for themselves taking heavy losses but looks like this could be it, they are in fact making progress Korean soldier has been pushed away, he was caught out of good cover sniper even retreating behind only half track, oh and an anti-tank gun and the half track's actually moving up into it seeing a bit of fire meanwhile false guns over here are getting caught by snipers and riflemen taking heavy losses but looks like clearly korean soldiers not giving up the gun they launch a flank assault on the riflemen taking down a few there sniper opens up as well more riflemen moving in snipers moving up and of course using the cover so nicely provided by korean soldier earlier moving up and meanwhile that half track still proves to be a nuisance but it's slowly taking damage Grenier setting up position behind the fences but the fences are going down sniper uncovered Grenier is getting sniped for the fallen and goes up mine goes off again rifleman down half track rushes in but it's getting sticky bombed and the anti-tank gun has been discovered spotted 
And it's going down flame for Skane Veterans. He won, my goodness. Pack crew is dead. Meaning one less anti tank asset for Korean soldier. Sturm Armory is up, though. That should be able to provide some. For the brave boys of the Panzer Grenadier Division. Well, the Americans definitely are no less brave in this fight. Definitely doing quite a bit as well. Oh, getting snapped though again. Half tech sneaks into the west. Awfully damaged though. I'm not entirely sure what he's actually hoping to achieve with that. In fact, he could end up losing it. Snipers both veteran to one. Seven kills each. Bamak sniper, 28. He's definitely earned himself in. And veteran to two. Rifleman retreating. Lang Grenadiers to advance up rather slowly. Half track providing cover and of course reinforcement, but it is going to need repairs. Volsker sneaking up the west. Rather less supported. I think someone hit a mine. Not entirely sure who. Nothing going on. The Sturm Armory and Tommy is now going for the tank depot. He is going to punch in the teeth of Korean soldier, if not kick them in. And wipe off that Germanic grin. Oh, there we go. Mine goes off. No one killed. All these mines do seem to be rather ineffectual in the killing department today. Troops getting sniped. And there we go. Right from the sword pushing up against the Grenadiers. And there we go. Sniper uncovered and quickly retreating. He does survive, but he's not going to be aiding the fight. Thus allowing the American snipers to quickly push up and get some more kills to their tally. Oh. Central victory upon court. In fact, Korean soldiers getting rather drained. And we are seeing a bit of flame for here to just in case. There's a mine. I might, of course, spotted it with the reconnaissance run. There's certainly quite a few possibilities there. But we are seeing Korean soldiers getting a large part of the map. We're also seeing the tank depot now up. No supply at upgrades, though. That definitely needs work. Mine poof. Oh, poof. Oh, kaboom. Grenadiers and Fulton moving up. Half tank also moving up. Auto cannon blaring away. Not really damaging the engineers and heavy cover though, and with that 21. Crashing through the bar wire. Could be getting a bit too close. Still. Oh, there we go. Veterans on the way. Half check. Does need it. Oh, nice again. Spot for re strafing run. Oh, it's actually time to have a look at Tommy. My apologies. There we go. False guys and grenadiers are moving in, but they are getting scorched. And we are seeing a grenade against the Americans, forcing them out of cover. Oh, brilliant. Suppressing the Americans. And of course exposing them to more fire. Engineers getting pushed away here. Too much fire from the Grenadiers. This is absolutely looking grim for Tommy. But he is getting himself a Sherman and that can actually be to the advantage since there's absolutely no anti-tank assets at the moment. The anti-tank gun has not been recruited. Sticky bomb on the armored car. Damaged engine. Sherman about halfway done. Small skirmishing right here trying to catch that MG42. No grenades by the looks of it from Tommy. No munitions for a strafing run. Bit of a shame. Bit of a shame. Again, all those candidates would make an excellent strafing target. You're losing a sector. Rifling getting suppressed by the MG42 once more. Going for the cutoff point. Again, very good aggression right there from the German player. Ooh, two candidates down. Nice sniper fire, but there we go. Sherman ready. The M4 Sherman. Half track down. First target of the day. Brewed up. They're going after one of our munitions points. Second shot though, more of a dart, but come on, push, push. Go and make Patton proud. Rather than hold up by an MG42. Points being retaken. Oh, this rifle squad could be going down for Tommy. Another recon run. He's very interesting in getting those. And looks like these Grenadiers might be picking up the pack to turn it against the Sherman. Indeed. Rifle might want to consider evacuating. American is advancing with a bit more armor support. Perhaps when he could do well. Five command points being floated. 
We might want to consider getting some more infantry, at least a medic station again to sort of hit with all the wounded. Pack firing away. I'm coming up the flank. And the pack getting assaulted by flame friend. Yes, but the engineers. Oh, getting pushed away themselves. Shen moves up, getting hammered. So very close, but just can't quite get it. Oh, German unit down. Pack almost down, in fact, itself. Tommy being, of course, very bold with the Shemini. Can take several hits from a pack. Of course, it can't withstand that much more fire. Sniper's getting, ooh, uncovered by the armored car. Rifle moving up. Ooh, did he just... Oh, he lost another rifleman squad or just in a... He's, he's, in fact, down to very little infantry. But he is looking to be getting a there tank destroyer. Forward placements, trying to take our territory. Oh, not really looking good for Tommy. They not really looking good. Left. He is going Losing to need some replacement there. infantry. And again... Oh, he doesn't even have a supply and upgrade... As of yet, doesn't seem to be doing too well right there. Sherman, though, quickly getting repaired, pushing onwards once more. Another recon run. He seems very keen on them. Not so much in the strafing runs again when he had several opportunities, I think. And again, that's because he wasted all the munitions on recon, not strafing. Germans are getting pushed back, tank destroyer ready, Sherman almost done as well. We are seeing a storm, we should, but we're not seeing any veterans. Oh, it's getting, oh dear, oh dear, getting flanked by the tank destroyer. Nice hit on the rear. And the 17th SS did, by the way, actually has Stuke Force, largely most of the divisions and such, very equipped with the Stuke. Three, which was the most numerous armored fighting vehicle in the German army. The Stufe only had a few thousands, but still were needed to actually make up for losses caused by Allied bombing of the Stuke Three factories. And the Stuke Three G design, as it was known, was actually largely unmodified from the about 1942 design where it actually was finished. There was some minor modification, for example, the Stuke 3 had a remote controlled MG. All Enemy pack unit. cleared out. And again, reconnaissance runs to spot for any snipers. That's ensuring, of course, is it safe for my snipers to go kill some crowds? Indeed, it is for now. We'll be seeing any riflemen there to replace the ones lost. No, we'll be seeing another tank destroyer. But again, all to consider getting a supply out, Mr. Tommy. <laughs> A standoff again. Americans once more pushing forward again. Korean soldier getting drained. And it's enough, there's been no major effort to really clear out this structure of all the MGs in it. Perhaps if Tommy was to make a slightly concerted effort, perhaps even just moving in a shum to sort it out, he might be able to push through there. And rather open that up as a front. Help cat getting hammered by Nebelwerfer, but not really taking a lot of damage. Pack sneaking up, Nebelwerfer ready. Fresh snipers out for. No, just what, still the same fella with 34 kills. Another Hellcat on the way, quite interesting. Fire. MG could get it pushed away there. We are seeing rifle, but they are just near there to occupy it while the flame first squad moves up. And there we go, MG 42 forced away. Left flank collapsing for the German army. We are seeing some grenadiers. No, false gun is actually being moved in to try and con contain it. And the armored armor cars rushing up. Right into the trap, perhaps. Heavy damage to the armored car. I mean, Hellcats can ambush and they do gain an accuracy and I believe a damage bonus as well. Oh dear, armored car out of control. Enemy 17 reconnaissance. Battalion suffered a bit of a blow there. And the armored cars were actually the ones to do the reconnaissance for the Panzer divisions. There were sort of reconnaissance units with Panzer grenades in them, but they were more that to actually protect the armored cars and ensure they can get through enemy lines. And were actually your also not to use just as reinforce and sort of again a divisional elite, just like with the infantry and the fusiliers. Going for the victory point right there. Oh, really hoping to drain down Korean soldier. Pioneers versus flamethrowers. Another recon run, not really working out. Pack finding away. Cut the enemy unit down. Will he snipe it? Apparently not. 
Bit of a shame that. Perhaps he was trying to get that sniper, but the sniper's not revealing himself. Hellcat out of control. Sherman rushing in. Panier's getting blasted. And there we go. Hammering the pack with sniper fire. Another armor car down. Stug down. This is rather all of a sudden getting grim for Korean soldier, though he is certainly taking a heavy toll on the Americans. Several Hellcats down, but he has lost himself several armored cars, an anti tank gun again, and his Sturm Geschütz. German infantry rallying about, and again he has regained the West, my goodness. Tommy's just getting more armor. Interestingly enough, not not infantry. Trying to clear out that pack instead of repurposing it to his own purposes. And German sniper keeps sniping. Seven command points being floated. Oh! Veteran 2 for the Sherman increasing penetration. And the 50 cal, of course, making itself nasty as well. Oh, the Hellcat wasn't even repaired. Oh dear, it was. That was a bit unfortunate, and we are seeing additional assault guns being rushed in. Armor Colts moving up. Sniper fire opening up, but doesn't quite get it. And we're hearing, seeing heavy needle being directed against the American positions. Veteran C3 for this sniper. Korean soldier is certainly feeling the pressure now. Whoops. Down to two Grenadier squads, so he's lost one. He's in fact taking some losses now. So clearly Tommy is not out of the fight. In particular now with an additional Sherman ready. Additional Stooks on the way. No veterancy for the Sturmgeschütz though. Not at all. Speeded. Oh, never mind. Stu coming under fire. Armored car rushing in as well. Engineers moving up to repair. And an additional assault gun. Arrives. Sniper down. I mean, Pioneer down to a sniper. Not the other way around. That would be a bit embarrassing for the sniper. I think. Sherman advances carefully. Ooh, Grenadiers run away. Pack moving up. Could risk sniper fire though. And we are in fact seeing an upgrade for the Sherman increasing the penetration of their guns. Jolly good. Pack getting sniped. Megan sniper though. Uh, closing and snap himself, and there we go. Pack cleared out again. Now, if only Tommy had what he needed to really take out the Stooks, he could probably push off Korean soldier permanently. And the sniper once more barely escapes. And I'm starting to wonder if Airborne, though, was actually the right doctrine for Tommy. He doesn't really seem to have gained a lot out of. It accepts some reconnaissance run, but not really a lot of damage. And for example, with all the armor he's using, armor doctrine might have been better or infantry, perhaps as a more regular artillery with you know on map. Or perhaps even off map. Perhaps some rangers or off map combat groups. All of those things could rather severely have benefited at home, I believe. Bit of quiet, but there we go. Storm gets its moving forward. Still no veterancy. Grand this. Ah, uh, running into what you'd call trouble. And what is this? We are seeing a 280 mm rocket barrage. For whom the total casualty list is one engineer. That was definitely a bit of a dud. One Stug moves a bit too far in. Will the Shermans be able to pounce on it? And he is moving up, but they are taking heavy losses. Stug exposing its three armored car coming under fire. Oh wait. 
was the Stug. German infantry on the left pulling back. Fifty-two points left for the Germans. Another recon run, but they're not really achieving much. Except pulling the sniper a bit further back. And a pioneer sport went down. Again, not really looking good to be a German pioneer. Repair bunker though is up and we are seeing an additional assault gun on the way for the Germans. And an additional Sherman on the way for Tommy. So he might want to actually get in the third one to assist. And of course to focus fight don't shoot at them singularly. Focus down one Stug. One at a time Tommy. That's how you're going to win this war. Oh dear. Constantly shifting targets, not good armor tactics. Just focus down one shoe at a time. They have less health than a Sherman. They have about perhaps even half health, if I'm not mistaken. So I mean, if you can focus down one, they should be going down rather quickly. Rather than getting sniped, Sherman's getting pushed back. Oh dear, Sherman down, Stu getting sticky bombed, Raven getting hammered, sniped, damaged engine. But there we go, Stu down, I repeat, Stu down, put. Snipers continue firing away. Sherman rush in before the fallen end goes up. Needle over fire. Oh dear, but the Sherman is getting exposed to heavy fire from several assault guns and panzer tracks. Sherman out of control, that was the veteran D2 one in fact. Sniper's moving up. A recon run, and now we're seeing. Ooh, we still one Sherman there, and a tank destroyer moving in. Oh, sniper was so close, still couldn't get those damn American snipers. Hellcat moving in, but has to be careful. Has to be careful. Full sixth. Getting hammered. Sherman though moves in while the Stooks are exposing their rears. Out of control. Veteran G1 for the Sherman, but it does go down to the Stooks. Rather seems like Tommy is suddenly very short. Well, this has certainly been quite the armor fight. Several Hellcats and Sherman's going down, Stukes blowing up, armored cars also blowing up. Quite nice little fight in that sense, although of course a very it might be a bit one-sided sometimes. It can be a bit hard to judge that when you're watching it at any time speed. Still interesting fight. Eugenius getting hammered, and again he's only now just going for the victory point drain. And again he might have succeeded a bit better again had he been able to, you know, really open up this area and again force. Korean soldiers are spread out, but sadly he was not able to do that. In sense, in essence, what happened and was allowed to happen was an MG42 held the entire western flank. Rather than getting MG'd, airborne with Krolis Raft is now holding 30 caliber up. Krolis is getting sniped, gunned, shot at, and other nasty things. No anti-tank guns dropped in, that could also be nice. Or if he had been able to secure that German one earlier. German sniper as usual escapes. Like some cartoon villain at the end of every episode. He lives to see another day. Got civil assault guns. The Panzer Grenadiers are not giving up. And you, most Panzer Grenadier divisions did not actually have any tanks. They usually had only assault guns, in fact. The only ones I so far know to have them were the 11th SS Nordland and the Großdeutschland, which was actually more heavily equipped than most 
Panzer Division, in fact, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, it even had a Tiger Company attached to it. Airborne, though, coming under heavy fire again. The Stukes moving forwards, getting off quite a few kills. And the riflemen are definitely not doing too well in the face of all of this. Falskin is getting sniped in return, but it's not quite making up the difference. 30 caliber trying to cover, but again, too much assault gun fire, losing men. Five kills, two armor kills. Tommy getting slowly and slowly pushed further back into his base. Definitely taking a very severe losses, although he's been able to really you know, rake up the kills with the snipers. Oh, he lost actually his last sniper. Oh dear, poor Korean soldier. I don't really think that's going to be a huge problem. Rather large, it looks like he's won the game, so why not end it here? And of course, I mean, game over, victory for the Reich. And of course, what can we learn from this? I mean, I rather think the thing that might have lost Tommy this, of course, I could be wrong. But I think it's partly, you know, a lack of medic stations, a lack of supply and upgrades, which really could have helped him early on. I think partly, you know, getting more veterancy force infantry, but of course, also helping with the manpower upkeep. But I also think he. I think he should have gone for another doctrine. I mean, rather, armor, for example, would have meshed really well with all the armor he had. For example, you know, field repairs, perhaps of getting a Pershing to add up to that, which I think could have won him the game. Or going infantry, off map combat groups, and some artillery, perhaps a bit more regularly. Instead, he sort of ended up just with a lot of reconnaissance runs, which did something, but not quite enough either. He was never really able to get that punch, and of course, he also left the left too locked down by Korean soldier for way too long. Way too long. I also think some of those German engagements definitely were poor. He should not have engaged with that full support. Perhaps even then dropping in an anti-tank gun. But again, that didn't quite happen either. Had he perhaps done that, you know, dropping in an anti-tank gun, perhaps with armor piercing rounds, he might also have been able to win. But again, it didn't quite materialize. So I really think he didn't quite get as much out of airborne doctrine. Again, I'm not entirely sure it was the right doctrine for him. And I also again think a medic station should have done well. And on the other hand, I mean... Korean soldier essentially won by virtue of Sturmgeschutz, Nebelwerf and some good German infantry. So there you go. Do hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, why not subscribe and tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.